So, um, as funding lessens within cultural sectors, particularly in Britain, museums of all kinds need to find new and innovative approaches to encourage investment, remain functional and relevant. <clears throat> this paper situates Roman archaeology displays within this conundrum. I shall initially set out issues faced by local museums to demonstrate the challenges faced by the sector. I will then introduce ideas of what the roles of museums are, as these roles are what museum displays have to engage with and uh, flourish in to uh, survive and engage more and more people uh, within society. Once these have been briefly discussed, the paper will use questionnaires conducted by myself with the public um, in British museums to explore how Roman displays may proceed further into the 21st century whilst remaining relevant, socially valuable and investable, because that's something that's quite important obviously for the future with the current um, economic climates and so forth. So it will be no surprise to anyone here that many cultural institutions in the UK in particular suffer from a lack of funding. This claim is supported by reports such as the Museums in the UK 2018 report, as well as my own research. In my first data set, um, I interview um, curators and museum educators and museums, um, of which over half state that money is a limited factor in their curatorial um, processes. To expand further, since 2010, local funding of museums in England has declined by a third, and this has, of course, um, resulted in many museum closures. This lack of funding has stemmed from austerity agendas that are unfavourable of the heritage sector, an issue that has been predicted to continue to hamper institutions um, for years to come. Kristen van Barnveld and Osman Chu's recent study centres around a similar situation in Australia. They conclude that funding deficits have stretched budgets in Australian institutions to the extent that it's led to a limited accessibility to cultural items. As such, the continuation of a cultural institution's basic roles in the UK and elsewhere may further rely on private funders if public funding continues to decrease in collections around the world. Still, the question remains, how does Roman display stay relevant in increasingly neoliberal worlds where maximisation regularly overlooks the cultural um, relevance of a local museum and Roman displays as well? I argue throughout this paper that Roman displays can remain and gain relevance and value within modern society through innovative narratological approaches. Traditionally, museums were seen to simply represent history. This was done, and still is to a great extent, through a colonial lens that imposed white narratives over depictions of history. Now by white narratives, I mean that displays were created by white individuals, usually men, uh, for white audiences. As such, displays focused on the representation of white people and their superiority, which has remained a standard practice through stagnation and the cementing of social norms. Fortunately, such displays gradually lose relevance for modern societies as social views progress, audience demographics change, and societal roles of institutions differ. Of these societal roles, we have education, accuracy, and the preservation of history, which is routinely uh, floated around. However, representations of history play many more complex roles in society, as we know. Uh, and this paper only concentrates on one, and that's an institution's role to represent a modern, diverse population through inclusive, inclusive and empathetic narratives. Museums, especially local museums, are only really relevant if they fulfil a function to society through their audiences. To fulfil that function, therefore requires relevancy and inclusion, two values that go beyond institutional walls and situate different groups in society's fabric. This is a particularly important aspect in relation to the use of, Roman, of the Roman period, which has, and still is, used to support and shape national ideals and identities throughout Europe. As such, depictions of the Roman period are inherently political. Why not, then, I ask, recognise, own and take responsibility for creating history in these politicised spaces and use it as a strength to engage with contemporary issues? To do so, Roman narratives could be curated to actively support ideals such as inclusivity and equality, and of course representation. Um, it is important to note here, I do not mean curators should bend history in any specific way and force it to fit a particular narrative. It does mean, however, that museums will have to take a stance 
on political issues which forces institutions to break free from the commitment <coughs> of neutrality. James, a museologist, associates an avoidance to stray from the path of neutrality with a fear that museums will fall prey to bias, trendiness and special interest groups. James and Sandell further discuss how museums avoid non-neutral standpoints as they may risk potential and current governmental private funders. Would the British Museum, for example, remain funded by BP if they uh, criticise the impact of crude oil uh, in their um, exhibitions? James and Sandell advocate for activism within museums, the presence of which foresees institutions as using their political space as forces for good through the use of ethical thought and value-driven curatorship. Now, this is in opposition to the creation of traditional displays that reinforce outmoded depictions of history that accentuate colonial, tired and irrelevant narratives and can negatively affect certain demographics of society, such as people who identify as black, Asian and other minority ethnic groups. Increasing relevant Roman displays for wider audiences that situate all groups of people within a shared history will benefit society and increase museum participation. An example of an issue related to outdated displays is highlighted by a British Pakistani on their questionnaire sheet, and I quote, there is little representation of South Asian or the non-white diaspora and their contributions in the UK museum displays. This promotes a narrow interpretation of the makeup of historical societies. It implies that racial diversity is a relatively new development, which in turn could reinforce the idea that these groups are recent arrivals and have little to claim, a little claim to the country in which they reside. To create inclusive Roman display narratives could progressively affect many in society, as well as generate more relevancy between local groups and their, uh, their museums and their public societies in the Roman period, and therefore contribute to the continued existence of Roman displays and cultural institutions. Now I'll now um, use data from my conducted questionnaires um, to demonstrate that museum audiences are accepting of Roman history to be displayed in a way that advances its use and situates it in a modern socio-political sphere um, that adds new meaning and relevance to displayed narratives and therefore innovates and re-energizes Roman narratives and our relation with it. So overall, um, I managed to conduct 256 questionnaires in five different museums, um, all of which were, were in um, England, so not so much in Scotland and Wales and so forth, um, as well as one archaeological interest group. When in the museum, the questionnaires were carried out within Roman galleries, which meant that all participants had at least one Roman gallery that they could reflect on while looking at my questions, um, in case they had never been to a Roman um, gallery or display or anything like that before. So I'll start the introduction to my data by introducing question four, and I should have brought the questionnaire with me, but I forgot to print it out. But if anyone wants to email me, then I can send it out so you can see. Um, so question four. Do you feel as though your own ethnic identity is included within museums and heritage displays? So as you can see, some of my questions look at museums as a whole, and then the last section zones in to the Roman displays. So as you can see, 83% of people, which is 213, stated that they did, whereas 33 individuals, which is around 13%, responded that they felt theirs was not. These results are in line with statements I made earlier that local museums and many other history displays are biased for the use of white narratives, as 68% of the questionnaire participants explicitly identified as white. So one of my options, one of the demographics at the bottom, was to ask for um, their ethnicity. And I didn't actually give them any options, any drop down boxes or anything for this. So I was interested to see what they'd actually say uh, from the top of their heads, for example. A, th a further 30% ethnically identified themselves without depicting a descriptor of race. For example, ethnically identifying as English. Irish, British, Belgium, multicultural, European, normal, which I find quite uh, troublesome, um, <laughs> human, Yorkshire, um, Celtic, and atheist. <laughs> so we can we can probably assume that many of these individuals are also white. Uh, we just can't tell from the data itself. Um, as such, answers to question four can be seen to relate to the ethnicities of those who completed the survey. Of those who I answered the question forward and no, there was a 50-50 split whether their ethnic identities should be included within museum narratives. Of those who did not think their ethnicity should be included within displays, 
Many answered along the lines of being visitors and that display should only represent those who live or have lived in a specific area or country of the museum. Now this is an interesting point to unpack, especially for me. As, as we know, the Roman Empire is known to have been inhabited by a diverse population that moved around. As such, the Roman period possessed diversity. Just like multicultural and multiracial demographics today, we need to think why this knowledge is not being translated to the public. Why does it seem absent from many Roman history displays? And is there anything behind the assumption that your own ethnic identity may not be included in the fabric of a museum, but it does not belong there? So jumping back to the beginning of my questionnaire, to question one, uh, the question is, do museums or heritage sites or and heritage sites have a duty to represent everybody in modern society? 69% of people, which is 177, stated that they should. 26% of people answered with no. With many raising concern with the presence of the word duty within the question. Duty appeared to deter some people from answering yes, as it challenges their ideal of what a museum's role is. Is it to represent history, or is it to represent modern societies? In fact, a Rome display can do both. Interestingly, almost the direct opposite percentages are seen for question two, that asks whether visitors are concerned with how many identities and or ethnicities are represented in history displays. 64% of people answered no, whilst 31% stated that they were. It appears as though those of us that are regularly included within history displays do not see an issue with them, and therefore do not concern ourselves with identifying and acknowledging those that history displays ignore. It would therefore seem that the majority of individuals who visit Rome displays are comfortable, at face value at least, with the state of Roman history displays and representation. But would existing audiences still be interested in displays if their narratives were expanded to include increasingly different identities. Question six asks whether individuals are interested in discussions of ethnicity and identity within the context of the ancient world. 86% 86 of people stated that they were, whilst 81% followed this up by stating in the next question that they are also interested in discussions of ethnicity and identity that relate to the modern period as well. As such, from the sample of visitors the survey engaged with, the data provides potential for local museums to widen participation through engagement with new audiences whilst also retaining those that are already existing um, kind of custom. So with this in mind, I'll now look to uh, questions 8 to 10, which is the last section, which asks a little bit about the Roman displays and how they feel this should be displayed. Um, so uh, question 8 asked whether it's important to depict the makeup of Roman society and therefore the discussions that involve the acknowledgement of multiple cultures, races, languages, ethnicities and religions, and of course that list goes on and on, such as jobs and so forth, that formed ancient populations. 99% of people, so that's all but two, actually stated that it was important. In addition, 75% of individuals answered question nine by stating that it is important to all these discussions that can reflect upon <coughs> modern society and debate. A lot of people said that this makes it easier to understand and it gives us more opportunity to learn something from the Roman past. The topics just mentioned, however, can form this bridge and do it whilst remaining empathetic to its audience, sincere and true to our political knowledge of the Roman era. The main challenge that faces these discussions, however, may be breaking that myth of neutrality that I mentioned earlier. Do museums want to be seen as using the Roman past to support socio-political stances, and would audiences be accepting? Well, the final question of my questionnaire asks whether individuals think depictions of history are influenced by modern political views. 80% of individuals reply stating that they do. Audiences seem to be predominantly aware that the past and present are entwined in many ways. Of course, the other 20% seem to think history is history, or should be just history. The general concern, however, was that history should not be twisted and that any apparent bias is always seemingly a negative. As stated before, Roman archaeology does not need to be manipulated to produce connections with modern society in the 21st century. Therefore, whilst the majority of individuals realise that history is affected by modern concerns, again, why not own this aspect of a history display 
and use it to depict Roman history in a way that engages with positive socio-political ideals. So throughout this paper, I've identified issues that are faced by local museums in particular, and how Roman displays may be used to face these challenges. The paper proposed a scenario where Roman display narratives could be used to engage with socio-political ideals of inclusivity that have the potential to widen participation within museum exhibits. Answers to the conducted questionnaire provides encouraging data, I think, uh, which even before great unpacking and analysis, demonstrates that the Roman period can be narrated in a way that creates empathetic displays that engages with the 21st century and its ideals, while simultaneously providing museums with a possible answer that could contribute to their continued existence and keep Roman archaeology relevant throughout the 21st century. Thank you.